Well, we're back in Gene's, uh, it's a Toyota? It, it's a Nissan. Nissan. And this time protected to some degree from, you know, street noise. We're looking across Westlake at the old McKay dealership, built in 22-23. And then it sustained itself in the end, selling Subarus until 91. And after that, it was used for a variety of odd purposes. But it became an important and somewhat controversial landmark in the neighborhood because it was, after all, an early example of terracotta, lavish terracotta construction. The whole thing was slathered with beautiful terracotta, as we can see from the historical shots. So when uh, the Paul Allen Group Vulcan had to decide what to do with the thing, there was a lot of pressure to keep it as a landmark. Of course, there's pressure from another side, which is the young architects who look for opportunities to, to do imaginative uh, work, uh, which Paul Allen, for instance, had sponsored in several places. So here was a, a bit of a battle then between the preservationists and the bright young architects. And that's going on all over the nation because it's seen as a way of placating preservationists to keep the facade. It's called, is it called facadism or something like that? Yeah, Some, something, something like, like that. that. And it doesn't make architects very happy, most of them, except the ones that get the job to do the sort of conversion work, you know, saving the old and putting it slap up against something new. In this case, the something new is typically a, a glass curtain uh, not particularly imaginative. This particular link, this particular glass curtain, which is now the Paul Allen Institute. I think this is where they do the brain research mm -hmm. and whatever else Paul Allen does in an institute, which is many things. It does have a kind of Modrian, you know, a, a geometric simplicity to it that's not that unpleasing. But anyway, for many, many years then, for 70 years, this was the home of William O. McKay. Most of those years he was selling Ford. For one year, Gene, and very few people know this, during the Depression... It was quit. a whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny and very appropriate, but wrong. <laughs> no, for one year, or part of one year, he sold Chevrolet's. He went from Ford to, to Chevrolet's for some reason. Uh, oh, hello there. Yes, we're blocking the sidewalk. Oh, God, these are, people know their rights. Uh, and it was from this then, it was his kingdom. And he was the first one then to help make Westlake an auto row. Hmm. He had come down from Pine Street, where Pine and Pike and Broadway were auto rows. You remember us doing Sayers, the guy that had the the, the oh, hydroplane yeah. race guy? We went up and visited Auto Row for that. So this was a very important auto sales district for many, many years, largely because McKay came down here and built this palace. Really, this is a palace. Hmm. Now, when he got here in the first year, they he, he did a contest. He was a really smart promoter. He did a contest asking for citizens to submit uh, a description of the new quarters, and then they would choose a winner and, and give them something. I don't know if they gave him a new car or not. And the winning contest out of about 20,000 submitted, or maybe it was 2,000, I forget, but a lot, came from a guy named Short from Bellevue. And Gene, I want to ask you, with your mellifluous theater trained voice to give it all of the resonant PR qualities that you can. All right, would you read it? Sure. All right, I'll hand it over then. A bright lighted place that makes you want to buy a Ford. That in a nutshell describes the new home of William O. McKay Co. Ford dealers, Westlake and Roy Street. The attractive white terracotta exterior with a plate glass front, unlike anything in the locality, stands out prominently among the other structures and catches the attention. 
the large, well-lighted showroom on the main floor, one of the outstanding features of the building, provides facilities for displaying the Ford products to the best advantage. No other automobile corner in the Northwest has a better facility for showing what it has to sell. The parts department, conveniently located, is well arranged, both from the standpoint of service to the patron and economy and convenience in handling this important adjunct to the automobile headquarters. Uh, these two features, display room and parts department, combine to convince the observer that the new McKay home was built for a specific purpose. And the purpose? Selling Ford cars. Another important feature of this modern automobile home is the machine shop and repair department occupying the top floor. Just a look in there convinces one that repair and overhaul jobs will be quickly and efficiently handled. In fact, it is an exemplification of the McKay motto. After, After we, sell, we sell, we, we serve. serve. Office and restrooms carry out this thought that seems to be expressed in other parts of the building. Well, you've heard it now. Isn't that sweet? Uh, and you've seen the inside, some pictures of it. It was kind of a wonderful, wonderful place, although perhaps more imaginative than Mr. Short's description made it seem. Anything else you want to talk about? Well, would, would you buy a used car from this man? Well, I would have to. I could never afford a new one. I don't know. I might go out on Aurora. I don't know. I've never really bought cars. People have taken pity and given me them, given me cars. I think that's how I got them. First from my parents, and then, no, I didn't really buy. I didn't buy anything. I've not been a great consumer. If America were run on my principles, we'd be in big trouble. We'd be in big trouble, really. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Gene? You're not a consumer either. No, not much of it. But it's nice you have a nice car. Yeah, yeah it's 10 years old now. It's a, right. As I said, it's a Nissan. We drove all over the state. You drove all over the state for the Seattle and Washington them now book. Yes, we did. I mean, that was a wonderful uh, excursion throughout the state. Well, many, anyway, McKay was your really typical booster. He came out of Capitol Hill. Uh, he was part of a sort of a club of kids up there that roamed the city. And right from the start, this guy, um, McKay, was a leader. I mean, even when he was in the University of Washington, after graduating from Broadway High, he became a representative of Broadway High alumni. I and mean, he was the leader. And that's one of the strongest alumni groups that was ever locally, the Broadway alum held on for years. I gave a talk to the Broadway alum years after the Broadway High was kaput. Mm -hmm. uh, he did all sorts of other things. He, he was a, uh, in, the, in the military. He, he ran the selective service here in Seattle during World War II. His son tragically followed him, followed him tragically in the military because he was killed by a a freak accident aboard an aircraft carrier in the South Pacific, I think in 44, maybe 42, a, a propeller got loose and sliced him up on, on deck. I think that's right, somebody crashed. Propeller got loose and sliced him up. And somewhat ironically, his dad, R. William O. McKay, died in the South Pacific too while he was on a cruise to the Fiji Islands, I think, I think in 54, 55. He was a 1908 graduate from Broadway High, so he didn't have that long a, a, an active life, but by gosh, he was chairman of this and chairman of that, and, and he was a master of promotion, self-promotion, and Ford promotions, except for that one year when he did Chevrolet's. When did McKay actually close? When did the business close? Well, he was dead. Right. But 90, but I mean, 91. It was doing Subarus then. 
So these show windows that we'll take a look at are yes. were once filled with, with Subarus. The Subarus, at the end it was we're finally Subarus. filled with Subarus, yeah. yeah. Highest, at the highest time it was like Mercury's and Lincoln's and Ford's. These, the, the amazing things we learn in these videos, I, I, I well, just, you know, as, as we, as we traipse through these, oh, these well, stories. Oh, yeah, are you learning things? I'm learning all sorts of stuff. Oh, wow. Well, maybe we better cut it off because you can't only learn so much. Well, that may be the case. Anyway, we keep this one short, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We're, we're perfect time. Okay. Perfect time in terms perfect of the Sherard principle. Well, you can keep going. We've gone up to no, no, 18 that's, minutes. No, that's enough. Look at, no, keep talking. Oh, look at all these notes, you see? And then you'll think of things this, you this wanted to say. This is an example of why I spend too much time on these features, these columns, because I go on and on and on. I love to do the research. Right. And with four paragraphs in the Times, heck, I can hardly get anything in the Times. But it's really fun to do the research, especially, and I keep harping about this since the Seattle Times is available online, keyword search to the Seattle Public Library. And every one of you smart viewers will know that you'll have a good time getting your library card out, and getting instructions from a Seattle Public Librarian, maybe in the Seattle room, and learning how to use the Times Archive to do searches on your family, on your address, on your neighborhood, anything worldwide. You'll find things, and you'll delight in it.